Hello everybody. Welcome to the show. Today's guest is Mr. Alex Mapleton. He is the author of uh, Gnanaya Catholic History, Heritage and Heroes. And that is this book. And also he produced a CD called uh, Masrani Particle. He is a physical therapist from India, uh, migrated here in uh, United States in 1968, that is uh, before I born. And uh, he was living in uh, Detroit and he was very much involved in uh, music and uh, fine arts. And he also have a, a master of uh, dermatology from the uh, University of Michigan. And another master's from Physical therapy education. Physical therapy education. On behalf of all my viewers, I'm uh, welcoming uh, Mr. Alex Lepulton to the show. Thank, Thank you, you very much for giving me this opportunity to be with you. Not a problem, not a problem. So tell me, uh, what is, uh, uh, you know, Knanaya, Knanaya means? A uh, lot of our viewers uh, are not familiar with the term Knanaya Catholics. Is, uh, could you uh, please uh, explain? to them uh, about uh, what is Knanaya and, uh, you know, what uh, community is uh, Knanaya community? The name, uh, the term Knanaya derives from the leader of a group of 400 uh, uh, Catholics who migrated from uh, southern Mesopotamia in the 4th century to the shores of Kerala in order to reinvigorate and rejuvenate the Christian faith. His name was Thomas of Knai. And the people who followed, who followed him and their descendants are called Knanai Christians. And among the Knanai Christians, there are two groups the Knanai Catholics and then the Knanai Jacobites. Could you explain a little bit about uh, you know, how the Knanai uh, uh, Catholics uh, you know, ended up in? Uh, uh, in Kerala and India and uh, you know their journey of uh, evangelization and uh, uh, social service uh, their contribution towards the uh, history of uh, Kerala uh, The history says that St. Thomas who we, we call the Doubting Thomas came to the shores of uh, India uh, in the year 52 AD and he was uh, looking for uh, preaching the good news uh, in different parts of the world. He was deputed to come to Kerala because originally the intention was to spread the good news, uh, Jesus' good news to all Jews first and uh, it was believed that there are Jews who lived in Kerala at that time. So the intention was to reach that. So he came over and, and uh, he was able to convert many of the Hindus living in India at that time. So he built seven churches in Kerala, uh, beginning from uh, uh, Kulon, Kollam to north in, in uh, 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 Malinkara, which is uh, Kodungalur. And then uh, he went to China and uh, came back to India and he, uh, he achieved his martyrdom in uh, 72 AD. He died in Mailapur and his remains were buried in Mailapur. Then later, of course, he was transferred to Rome. So this was the pocket of Christians who remained in India. But because this being a predominantly Hindu country, uh, the history says that gradually the fate deteriorated. By the time 4th century, uh, the bishop in uh, uh, Edessa had a dream that there was uh, Christians in India who are kind of uh, failing in their uh, intensity of faith and they needed help because they didn't have uh, seniors, there are priests or other clergy to guide them and control them and uh, continue to guide them in their faith. So he was asking for people how we can help those people. And uh, Thomas Knai, who was a trader, who was a businessman who was frequenting coast of Kerala, India, for uh, trade, to buy spices and other things from India to bring to Middle East. He was familiar with the plight of the Christians here. So he was asked by the bishop whether he could uh, undertake a journey 
and he volunteered to do that. So he came with uh, 400 people in three boats. He picked people from uh, 72 families belonging to seven sects, seven clans, so that there is a, a variety of uh, people. So they uh, arrived, it's believed, on 345 AD in Kodumilu. And since he was familiar with uh, the emperor of the, the emperor received him with uh, uh, great honor and then he continued to live there and he was able to reinvigorate the Christianity in India. So what happened uh, once they uh, reached, uh, you know, part of India that is Malabar coast of India called uh, Kodinalur? So what happened immediately after that? Uh, one of the uh, advices given to them as they were parting the shores of uh, Iraq, uh, Mesopotamia, uh, was that they should continue to uh, retain their, the intensity of their faiths. So they were asked not to marry from outside the community. So this was a means to an end. In other words, in order to retain the intensity of their faith, they were asked not to marry from outside because they had some bad experience. The Prophet Ezra had always banned people from marrying outside. So this was one of their ways to maintain the intensity because the intention was to continue to rejuvenate and to improve the, uh, the faith of Christians in, in Kerala. So they remained as a separate group. Uh, they were living in one section of the town while the, the old Christians, the Syrian Christians, you know, who were about 100 families at that time, were living in another part of the uh, city. It continued, and over the last 16 centuries, the Kranai Christians, they have tried to maintain their traditions and uh, uh, all those customs, which are uh, partly you know, Judeo-Christian in origin and partly, now we would say, uh, Indian. So that tradition, uh, that practice of uh, marrying within the community that's called uh, endogamy still continues. But again, the, the intention was they are here as missionaries, so their purpose is to uh, stick, together and, uh, stick together and continue as good missionaries, good uh, messengers of Jesus' news. Without uh, distracting uh, to uh, and you know, distracting and diffuse the, uh, their, their group. Already, you know, there are a group of Christians uh, who have been converted and baptized, baptized and converted to Christianity, uh, living in uh, you know the big country of India, and this uh, Kananes came to help them to stay in faith. So, uh, how was their uh, relationship uh, in the early days? There was harmonious relationship uh, between the two groups. Each one realized why. Uh, they were maintaining their traditions. But one of the good things that happened was uh, Thomas of Knai. He had uh, several qualities. First of all, he was a great businessman. And uh, he realized that unless we can retain some level of uh, nobility, uh, their message may not be received well by the high class. Uh, India had fourth class Brahmins were the high class and the intention, intention was to absorb as many of the people below the high caste. That way the message will filter down to the other caste. So in order to retain that kind of nobility, uh, he was able to uh, get what we call 72 privileges from the chairman Pirmar, the king of the land at that time. And those privileges helped the Christians uh, to retain that kind of uh, nobility and they were able to continue to spread the good news. And one of the good things is that uh, uh, all the Christians, all the Christians at that time were able to enjoy the same privileges. A couple of other things we, we need to say about how Thomas Knai was able to be a good leader. Being, not only being a missionary, uh, had the courage to undertake this uh, perilous journey from uh, Mesopotamia, from Iraq to Kerala. Then he continued to do business and of course then uh, he was bringing with him a bishop and other members of the clergy. So he was a very good uh, uh, leader 
uh, was able to maintain good coexistence between the clergy and the laymen, which sometimes you miss uh, today. The other thing, he was also a very patriotic man. Uh, he was able to persuade uh, a group of uh, uh, tradesmen who left the shores of Kerala, who fled to uh, what he called Sri Lanka now, which was still on then, uh, because they had some quarrels with the, bishop, uh, with the king. He was able to persuade them to go to Sri Lanka and bring them back. He was able to bring them back, who left the shores of Kerala, he was able to bring them back as a patriotic effort. And again, of course, you know, he was a, a, a smart man, so he was able to retain all those kind of uh, uh, good qualities uh, and uh, that enabled all the Christians to uh, retain some level of, uh, I say, supremacy, even though it doesn't sound good, but at least they were able to command the respect of the community. Oh, okay. So he was a respected uh, uh, businessman yeah, yeah. and a leader yeah. and a moderator. Or yeah. He was like, uh, uh, he was a good man and respect, well respected by the community at that time. Yes. You know. now, what, what happened to him after that, you know? Do you have any uh, information? Uh, we, we don't have good uh, history, I would say. What all we have in terms of the migration and all that is very sparse. There are about three or four sources from where we have grabbed and we were able to gather and put together some kind of uh, history. First was the, what we called a uh, shepherd or copper plates in which you know, the king had uh, bestowed some of the privileges. They were all inscribed on the plates and uh, I think some of them are still preserved in the British Museum. And then of okay, course... Okay. Oh, one minute. So it is, you mean the shepherd is still preserved place, yeah, yeah, in, British British in British Museum? British Museum as well. Okay. But I think some of the copies are available at Columbus, Ohio, and uh, and there are some pictures of them in the book. Oh, in, in your book? Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, it is uh, the copies of the... Uh, uh, the chapter, you know, the, the copper plates, the inscription, Okay. You know, which tells all the different privileges that in one of the universities that I was told, one of the libraries. Oh, really? Well, that's a good information. So, so this the. Uh, the original shepherd is available in uh, British in library, and the, co the, the copies of that is available in uh, uh, one of the universities in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, that's a good information. I already know that. Oh, okay. So what happened uh, after the uh, uh, you know the 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 the, the, the uh, not the Christianity, but the uh, the uh, local Christians who have been baptized by Saint Thomas, uh, you know their ancestors. And the uh, the new Christians came from uh, Mesopotamia or Edessa. So, so how was their uh, life in uh, Kerala? Uh, the, the 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 journey of evangelization. You know, uh, how was their uh, life and their you know their community life? Uh, what what we believe is that they they dispersed to different parts of Kerala. Okay. The Canaanite Christians were mostly in uh, parts like Kodimalur, uh, uh, Kadturthi, Chungam, Kalishedi, and Kote, mm. whereas uh, the other uh, Syrian Christians, they were all over the place. And we probably, Canaanite Christians, remain more as communities in different parts of Kerala. In different, different parts of uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this probably this whole What is the years. reason they, you know, be like a small pockets in Kerala? Is any reason or they just want to stay together or? Probably, probably that's the only thing we can, you know, that, you know okay. any group would like to stay together, you know, you know, to have a sense of belonging, sense of security. Okay. 